If you're in the market for an iPad and can't decide whether you want to fork over another $200 to Apple, plus monthly charges to your carrier for built-in cellular connectivity, don't even press add to cart before you watch this video, because I'm going to explain why using a Wi-Fi only iPad together with your iPhone is just as good. So you can put that $200 to much better use. One tech mind. What is up, people? I'm Lance Samosa, the guy with the One Tech Mind. I apologize, it's been a few weeks since my last video. I missed you guys a lot. I hope you missed me too. I'm excited to be back. I got sidetracked by this stuff called life that unfortunately got in the way of making videos, but now I'm getting back into the groove. And I took this downtime opportunity to, surprise, update my A-roll set, as you can see behind me here. I wanted to paint this wall dark gray for a long time. So I finally did it and changed up my whole background in the process. I really love how it came out and I hope you like it too. So let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are and let's get on with this video. So iPads with cellular connectivity. After weeks of using my Wi-Fi only M1 iPad with my iPhone auto hotspot, I largely think they're not worth it anymore for most people, especially if you're like me and don't use a ton of data heavy apps over cellular, like watching movies, downloading large files or binge watching YouTube. I mean, apart from this channel, of course. And since so many establishments have free Wi-Fi these days when you're out and about, I find myself only in need of cell connectivity for my iPad in a smaller number of places than before, like when I'm a passenger in a car, or when I'm scripting videos for you lovely people at a nearby park. Realizing this as I ponder getting my M1 iPad Pro with cellular connectivity like my 2018 model has, I decided to pocket the 200 bucks instead and go all in with Apple's auto hotspot functionality, which has been around for a while, but has been made much better, I found, recently by a few factors. First, it just works more reliably and seamlessly than ever before. Whenever I leave the fringes of my house's Wi-Fi, the iPad pretty much immediately switches over to my iPhone 12 Pro Max's hotspot, but it wasn't always this reliable. Oh no. It used to be very hit and miss, often not connecting and requiring a manual connection to my hotspot. I know, first world problems, right? But it's now obvious to me over the past few weeks that Apple has greatly improved the reliability with the auto connection. I haven't seen it fail once to automatically connect to my iPhone. And if you have an iPhone 12 variant, no, don't worry, it's not about to get pruned from the sacred timeline. Your phone will share its cell connection over the five gigahertz Wi-Fi radio, capable of faster transfer speeds than the older 2.4 gigahertz standard. Use of this radio is essentially required to take advantage of true cellular 5G speeds if you're lucky enough to be in an area that has them since 2.4 gigahertz is just too slow. The main caveat of 5 gigahertz is its range is shorter than 2.4, but since we're talking about an iPhone and an iPad, chances are they're gonna be very close to each other anyway, so this is negligible. And many products nowadays support 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so it's not just your Apple devices that will benefit from this. But wait, if you have an iPhone 11 or older, that's still okay depending on your model, and it's not gonna be a deal breaker, as you will see via the speed tests I performed in just a sec. First, let's set up your iPad and iPhone properly. Grab your iPhone and go to settings, then personal hotspot. At the top, you'll see some text that says, personal hotspot on your iPhone can provide internet access to other devices signed in with your iCloud account without requiring you to enter the password. In other words, as long as you're signed into the same iCloud account on your devices, you're good to go. If you do have an iPhone 12, you'll also see a toggle for maximize compatibility. To take advantage of the faster five gigahertz network that we talked about, leave this off. Just know that you may need to flip it on in the future if you want to tether older devices that do not support five gigahertz Wi-Fi or to increase your hotspot range a little bit farther. Next, grab your iPad and go to settings, tap Wi-Fi, then auto join hotspot, followed by automatic. From here on, your iPad will automatically connect to your phone's hotspot when Wi-Fi is not available. It will also do the same for iCloud family sharing hotspots you have access to, which alone is a sanity saver if you're a parent of kids with Wi-Fi only iPads like me, and it saves you some more money. For specifics on this and even more awesome ways to use your Apple devices together, check out my Apple ecosystem tips video right after this one. Auto hotspot works so incredibly well that I have completely forgotten my iPad is even tethering to my phone every time I take them out of the house. As for those speed tests, I've actually observed faster download and upload speeds than my 2018 iPad Pro that has cellular built in 
while tethered to my iPhone 12 Pro Max over the five gigahertz Wi-Fi network, and even my work iPhone 11 over the 2.4 gigahertz network. So there's your good news if you have an iPhone 11 or older. So most of the time, the 5G service my iPhone 12 Pro Max gets is just a little bit better than 4G. It's not the true ultra fast MM wave technology that Verizon provides in more major metropolitan areas. And my iPhone 11 connects to regular 4G LTE on Verizon as well. Despite this, I was seeing between 40 to 60 megabits per second download speed while tethered to either iPhone, compared to 20 to 30 megabits on my 2018 iPad Pro with the built-in 4G LTE radio. So as you can see with my tethering setup here, I'm retaining all of the convenience and achieving even greater speeds than my old iPad provided. If I had an iPad with 5G service to compare though, the difference in speed would almost certainly be less drastic and they'd probably be right on par with each other. But as good as this all sounds, you wanna keep a few things in mind since nothing is truly perfect. Hotspots are only gonna be as good as the cell coverage in any given area, of course. And if your phone has a bad connection, so will your iPad. But that would also be true if your iPad had built-in cellular anyway. Hotspot will also eat up your phone battery way more quickly than usual. So just keep that in mind. If you have an older iPhone or an iPhone mini, you wanna stay close to an AC outlet or keep an external battery pack close by for those longer sessions. You'll also need to make sure your phone currently has hotspot service with your carrier, of course, and double check if there are any restrictions, data caps, or limits associated with the feature. On my Verizon Unlimited plan, I get 15 gigs of hotspot data before my speed is throttled down to 600 kilobits per second, which is a huge downgrade. And even though carriers don't seem to understand the definition of unlimited, this ends up working out just fine for my use case. And while I do think this arrangement could work for most people these days, there are obviously gonna be cases where you may want or need dedicated cell connectivity in an iPad. Like if you do have an older phone or iPhone mini with an aging or smaller battery, or if you want to be able to leave your phone behind and just venture out with your iPad, of course. But now I feel like I can have it all through my iPhone because of improvements to battery life, Wi-Fi and cellular radios, and features like Auto Hotspot that work incredibly well. That's where you should do that 200 bucks you saved, put it towards Apple's magic keyboard for the iPad. And I know, I know, spending hundreds of dollars for a keyboard probably sounds ridiculous to you, but I promise it's worth every single penny. The Magic Keyboard transforms the iPad so much, I often forget my iPad even has a touchscreen anymore. And because of this, I view the Magic Keyboard as a more essential part of the overall iPad experience than built-in cellular is, especially nowadays. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you, whether you agree or disagree with me. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are what your use case is, whether you think this uh, is something that could or couldn't work for you, and uh, if you're in the market for an iPad. I got a lot of awesome content planned out for you guys coming very soon. As I said, getting back to the reg regular schedule of about uh, you know one video every 10 days or so. So I'm really excited about the stuff coming up. So if you dig this video, make sure you hit that like button for me, subscribe and to help build the most obsessed community in tech, and hit the bell so you don't miss anything else. And until next time, thanks for listening to my One Tech Mind.